In today's shipwreck video, we'll be looking away from combat ships, and instead to something more like Erebus and Terror. If you recall that video, those were two amazingly preserved Arctic exploration vessels. They were abandoned in 1848, although their exact time of sinking is more of an open question. Today's wreck, Endurance, was lost decades later, in late 1915, in the Antarctic Sea, on a similar expedition into cold waters. Fortunately, while Endurance would be lost, her expedition was not a tragedy. It was, if you'll pardon the pun, a feat of legendary endurance, both on the part of the men stranded in Antarctica, and for the men who sailed into dangerous waters to find rescue. With all of that said, I will be focusing on endurance for this video, as well as the ultimate fate of the expedition, an expedition that began in the mind of one Ernst Shackleton. He was already a famed Antarctic explorer. However, he was also an unsatisfied one. Shackleton felt there was more he could do, and while he wouldn't be the first to reach the South Pole, the man had another idea. Instead of just reaching the pole, he wanted to traverse it, the first overland crossing of Antarctica, an ambitious plan by all accounts. To perform this expedition, Shackleton would ultimately purchase a 300-ton vessel named Polaris. He purchased her in January 1914, after the original owner went bankrupt. This ship was brand new, and purpose designed for Arctic voyages. In this, Polaris's Norwegian builders had done their job well. The bow was heavily reinforced to take impacts from ice. The keel was extra thick, and the hull frames were similarly tough. The hull sides were also exceptionally well built, and made use of strong wood. Every bit of this vessel was designed to take ice and come out intact, right down to having both steam and sail propulsion. Perfect for Shackleton's needs by all accounts. Aside from one thing, after purchasing Polaris, Shackleton renamed the vessel to Endurance, apparently to match his family motto, by Endurance we conquer. That would hold true for the man, but not so much for the ship. In any event, with his new vessel in hand, Shackleton began his voyage as soon as Endurance was ready. For her maiden voyage, the vessel set off for Antarctica on August 8th, 1914. So, right as the Great War was kicking off in Europe. Not that Shackleton let that stop him. He took Endurance south, stopping over in Argentina for supplies before departing there on October 26th, 1914. One final stopover in South Georgia came on November 5th. Endurance remained there for a month, before departing for the Weddell Sea on December 5th of 1914. Two days later, Endurance would find herself stuck in pack ice. Progress slowed down, and the ship would move slowly south through the cracking ice. This was bad enough, but the ship would be stuck in a gale in January of 1915. The first bout of bad weather on January 16th for Shackleton to shelter near an iceberg. The winds calmed down enough on January 18th to make an attempt to leave. However, the gale had not left. It returned with full force as Endurance entered more pack ice. This time, the ship would not leave. Within hours of departing the iceberg, Endurance was stuck. While the ice would occasionally melt or break up, it was never enough. The crew remained aboard the vessel until October of 1915. Various attempts were made to free Endurance, but they all failed. Until on October 24th, the ice finally crushed the ship. Despite attempts to fight flooding, it was too late. Shackleton was forced to abandon ship on October 27th, 1915. By the next day, the ship had been crushed by the ice, and Endurance would ultimately sink entirely by November 21st. Footage of her mass collapsing and the bow being crushed was taken on November 13th. This has survived, and I'll link it in the description. 
As for the expedition, it would find shelter on Elephant Island, where Shackleton and five others took a lifeboat named James Caird on a legendary voyage to South Georgia. They would arrive safely and bring rescue back for the rest of the expedition. It would take several attempts, but on August 30th of 1916, they were rescued. Not one man was lost during this expedition. Endurance, however, was lost to time. The wreck would only be located two years ago, as of this recording. While several attempts were made to locate her, the wreck was only discovered on March 5th, 2022, by the Endurance 22 expedition. The wreck they found is in amazing condition, considering her age. But, as I said at the start, it's a similar story to terror. The freezing Antarctic waters have preserved the ship in a way most other areas wouldn't. This was also helped by the depth of 3,008 meters, or 9,869 feet. Now, with that admittedly lengthy backstory done, let's look at the wreck beginning with what is, of course, the most famous picture taken of it. The stern, with the name Endurance, still proudly fixed in place, along with the star that represents her original name, Polaris. You can see that here on the surface, both in the ice and in dock. It's amazing how well this was preserved, even accounting for the conditions. There's marine life, yes, but not much and the wood is still perfectly intact, aside from whatever damage was caused by the ice. For example, it looks like the rudder fell away here. Beyond that, however, very little has been lost from this angle. From further out, the same holds true. The darkness makes it harder to see below the stern, but we can now see the upper level, and the railing that has remained in place even after the ship was crushed. And, as you saw in the earlier photos, crushed is the right word. That makes this all the more impressive. Moving further in, but still focusing on the upper level, we come to the ship's wheel. This has, much like the railing, remained firmly in place. Although it seems to have picked up a passenger here. In general, the marine life up here is more apparent. It's still minimal, considering the age of the wreck. However, even in these cold waters, marine life endures. Beyond that, there are a couple other notable features. For instance, what looks like chain wrapped around the wheelbase here, and a gap in the hull in the background. Those are both difficult to see in this picture, but are more apparent in the next one. What's also more apparent is the entrance into the ship. Endurance has a collapsed doorway here including a fallen-in door on the inside. And, to the side, two interesting things. A mast that we'll see better in the next picture, and more of the hull structure beneath it, including a porthole. There's also a lot of scattered rope. Now for the next picture. Here we can see one major thing of note. That being, of course, the aforementioned mast. Collapsed over the side, where it fell over as the ice crushed endurance. There's much more marine life here, but the mast itself is mostly intact. Naturally, we can't see where it broke, but the mast, from the platform until it vanishes in the darkness, is in one piece, only a couple planks missing from the platform. Even that's worthwhile, because it shows intact rope, still tied in place and not rotted at all. It appears that more of the rope has fallen down as well. However, there's not really anything else to see in this picture. Not that we haven't already seen in the other pictures. So, let's move further up the ship. As we do, I'll note something. The stern was well documented. The rest of the ship, not so much. At least in release material. Admittedly, this is because the rest of the hull was crushed badly by the ice as you can clearly see in this picture. The deck is a ruined mess, a broken mast here, and beneath it, portholes. This would appear to be from the side of the ship, as you can see here on the surface. The position of the portholes matches up almost perfectly. 
There's also what looks like another mast, and it's resting atop more debris, while obscuring the detail of what look like boxes beneath it. On the other hand, the deck behind it is in decent enough shape, individual planks and all. However, we can't see far enough back to make out more detail. The same goes for the box structure here, which is just out of frame. As for the opposite side of the ship, we have broken planks, and what looks like the hull bulging out here. More evidence of the damage to endurance. Unfortunately, we don't get much better of a view. Even moving slightly ahead, it only shows more of the deck. Not much else. That said, we do get another look at the deck from a different area. I'm not sure which area, but it is clearer here. Although there's even less detail. There's a gaping hole here with debris covering it, as well as a hatch into the ship here, collapsed in on itself with more broken wood clogging it. I believe that the various larger pieces of wreckage here and here are more parts of the mast which, if you watch the sinking footage, completely fell apart. Add in a century underwater, and whatever further damage they suffered, it makes sense for the masts to be in this kind of condition. As for the deck, there's not much to say there. It's covered in everything from broken wood to scattered rope. But you can't make out individual planks in this area. Although, moving a bit further to the side, you can see the side of the hull or at least where the deck ends. There's clear mounting points visible here, but we can't see the actual side of the ship. At least not in this picture. The next set, on the other hand, shows us more. And it's not very pretty. You can see where the ice crushed endurance in right here. The hull is pressed in and badly broken. And the deck is buckled with planks coming apart at the seams. You can even make out the inner frames between the hull and the deck. Frankly, with that kind of damage, I'm amazed the hull is intact, even down to the portholes. Towards the bottom, meanwhile, you can also see the ocean bed. Endurance isn't buried deeply, but she has fallen into the silt. The next picture, for its part, is a bit further ahead. You can make out the change in the deck here and the damage isn't quite as severe, other than the split in the frames still visible to the side. However, this follows the pattern of not quite showing the full detail, so I can't say what's in the background here. In any event, this brings us to the last two pictures. First, the other famous picture, what I believe is a break towards the bow, where the ice completely tore the ship apart, leaving broken wood here along with collapsed superstructure. Yet, surprisingly enough, the anchor chain remains in its mounting, and it hasn't really rusted at all. Although that isn't surprising, with the preservation of the ship in general. Something that continues with the last picture, where the funnel for the steam engine fell over into a pile of broken wood. The funnel itself, either iron or steel, is still intact as is some other framework beneath it. And the steam whistle, likely brass, is still there as well, attached to the funnel and covered in mud. It seems like a good place to end, the closest look we can get at the heart of Endurance and her steam engine, incredibly well preserved even after a century underwater. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next one.